welcome to another DaVinci Resolve tutorial, which is an extension of a tutorial I've previously made involving how to reframe 360 degree video in DaVinci Resolve. If you haven't watched the other two videos on reframing, you need to watch them because you need to have Carter VR installed on your system, which is what the first video shows you. And then you have to have a basic understanding of what we're doing, which is what the second video shows you. The link to the videos will be in the comments. If you haven't watched them, I urge you to watch them. If you have watched them, then you'll know exactly where we are at the moment. What we've done is we've explored changing the pitch and the yaw. That's the angle or point of view that you allow the viewer to see in the flat video we produce from our 360 video. To, what I mean is like, for instance, we're looking at a bus stop here, but I don't want to, or rather we're looking at a bus shelter here, but I don't want to look at the bus shelter at this point in the video. I want to look at the bus stop. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the yaw control so that I look at the bus stop. So let's just bring the yaw control round. There we go. So I'm now looking at the bus stop. And let's just set the keyframe. That's done. You only have to set the first keyframe, the rest is automatic. And let's go forward in the video to the point that I want to come back and look at the bus stop. So about here, I want to stop and I want to come back and look at the bus stop. So if we set the yaw again, I come back from the bus stop and look at the bus shelter. There we go. So now we're looking at the bus shelter. Let's just come back and as you can see, it takes a very slow and gradual turn to look at the bus shelter. Now, I didn't like that turning then. I didn't want it to turn from the very start. I wanted it to turn from a point that I defined, say, about here in the video. Well, the only way to do that is to find the keyframe where it starts to turn, which is this keyframe, and delete it. Come to a point just before you want it to turn and set a keyframe. Go a couple of frames forward and then start your turn. So we'll start our turn now. There we go. Let's play that back and you'll see the difference. As you can see, nothing's happening here at the moment until we hit that first keyframe and then it's done. But that turn was really sharp and sudden and I didn't want that. So we have to mess about by deleting keyframes and finding the point in the video we want. Wouldn't it be great if there was a way where we could actually move the keyframes themselves without having to keep messing about deleting and changing the POV in the video? Well, there is, and it's in Fusion. And we're now gonna deep dive into Fusion to show you how to do that. So first of all, very important to get into Fusion from the edit screen, do not come into Fusion the way you perhaps would do normally by coming down the bottom here and clicking the Fusion page. Do not do that. We want to go into Fusion via Carter VR. What you do is you come up here. If you look, you've got a little wand and some little stars. That will take us into, into Fusion. So we click that. And that now brings us into our Fusion screen. What do we do now we're in Fusion? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to get our Carter back. And the way we do that is down here, you see this node that says Carter VR Reframe. Click that once and up comes Carter VR over here. If you're not seeing it over here on the right, make sure Inspector is turned on. If it's off, it's greyed out. If it's on, it's like that. The next thing we need to do is we need to look at the spline. Now, I've already got the spline up here. But if you haven't, up here is the spline control. It's normally greyed out. Again, to bring the spline in, just click it once, and that gives us the spline control. Now, if you look over here, we've got some tick boxes, and it shows us how to put a timeline up. So I want car to resolve timeline up. Now, previously, I've just changed the yaw of my video, so the yaw timeline is up there. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use the control to change the pitch so that I produce a pitch timeline. There we go. I've added a keyframe there for pitch. Now, I want to see both of these on the same screen, which I do with the minimize control. So if I just drag that back in, it shows me the two on the same screen like that. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Previously, if we wanted to change how fast something did something, 
we'd have to delete the keyframe, go to the point of the video and start again. Now all we do is we move the keyframes. Let's just have a quick look at this turn from the bus stop to the bus shelter. Look how quickly it goes. I don't want it to go that quickly, I want it to go a bit slower than that, so how do I correct that? Well it's quite simple, I look at the, key, the end keyframe, the keyframe where I've finished turning, and I just drag that along the timeline a bit further, so I'll drag it to say there. Let's just delete that keyframe, there we go. Alright, so I've dragged the keyframe there. That gives us a much longer time for the turn, now watch it. See how quickly we turn? I added, accidentally added an extra keyframe in there, which now just brings me to the easiest bit. What do you do about keyframes you don't want? Well, quite simply, click on the keyframe you don't want and click delete. And it deletes the keyframe. As you can see, we've got a nice turn there. That takes a long time to make that turn. Back forward. And this is starting from the start of the video, but if we don't want it to start from the video, again, previously we would have to delete the keyframe and start again. In this case, all we do is we just click on the keyframe and we drag it. And I want it to start about there in the video to give me that quick turn. So let's have a look at that. There we go. I want it to turn a bit faster than that. I want it to turn a bit faster than that, so I'm going to start it a bit later. I can either start it a bit later or I can end it a bit earlier. Let's end it a bit earlier, not much. Let's end it about there. Right. Again, by clicking and dragging the keyframe. No, I still want it a bit faster, so we'll start it a bit later. Click and drag the keyframe, there we go. Let's have a look now. Yes, that's about the speed I want it. Bear in mind we're in Fusion and we're working at a slower speed, about half the normal rate. Um, so that's absolutely fine, that's exactly what I want. Exactly the same with the pitch control. Say we wanted to pitch up at this point on the video, just click to add a keyframe and just grab the keyframe and we're pitching up. There we go. Now we can undo that, we can either undo that with the undo control or or we can highlight the key and draw box around the keyframe and click delete to reset them. It is as simple as that. If our movements seem a little jerky when we uh, when we play them back, we can actually smooth them out slightly. And the way we smooth them out is by drawing a box around the keyframes that we want to smooth out, and then come down here, and we've got the smooth control. Just click that, and it just smooths the keyframes out slightly. You can also click and drag keyframes within the movement and add extra keyframes to smooth it out. This will just smooth it out ever so slightly. We go back to the edit screen. We can see it at work at full speed. See? That was a much, much better way than having to keep adding and deleting keyframes all of the time. Well, at least I think it is. Now, here's the beauty of all of this. You can experiment. I did it myself. I went from the wrong screen. We come up from this screen here. You can experiment with these as much as you want because if you make a mistake, just draw a box around everything, hit the delete key, and you can start all over again. To add a keyframe, look, the arrow's already there with the plus. Just hit the plus. To delete a keyframe, draw a box around it and hit delete. It is as simple as that. As always, experiment with the keyframes and have fun. Every time you change something, the keyframe is there, you can do it on the timeline. I hope that has helped you in this tutorial to understand a bit more about advanced keyframing.
please remember if you want more videos to subscribe to the channel and uh, like that button like like the videos and that way you'll be notified when i release a new one i hope this has helped you if you've got any questions or anything like that let me know in the comments thanks for joining me on this tutorial i'll see you later